Now I'm sitting in probably the biggest risk I have ever taken. It was literally only around three years ago where I decided to rebuild my first sort of crash damaged car, which was Hannah's Audi TT. And as the channel's grown, so has my confidence. You guys know I'm literally no mechanic. I'm learning as I go along, as most people do, but this one is really gonna push my abilities. Now, I already know what you're thinking. I get it every single time I buy a new car. Why don't you finish all your other cars before you buy a new one? Well, I'm not making excuses, but let me explain. The C63 is pretty much ready for paint, so that means it will sit in a body shop. It's pretty much the same story with the Range Rover. It also looks like the same story for the E46 M3, and I can't finish the GT86 until the Range Rover's on the road because that will tow the GT86. Can I just say that that is a terrible excuse for buying another car? I guess you're right, but turns out I just like cars. This is or was a 2019 Aston Martin Vantage. It's beautiful. Well, it's beautiful if you squint. <laughs> As you can see, it's had a small front end knock and well, I'm no genius, but the chassis seems to have moved <laughs> in that direction. But as Aston Martin Vantages go, this was really cheap. Well, at least I think. The cheapest Aston Martin for sale in the UK right now is pretty much £90,000. That one is a complete Aston Martin though. This one was cheap for, well, quite obvious reasons. With the front end looking like this, with no headlights, damaged bonnet, and the chassis legs looking like this, it's categorised as a Category S, which means structural damage. But as you guys probably know by now from watching the channel, Category S cars can be put back on the road safely as long as you have an MOT test. Now before I tell you how much I bought it for and what's exactly wrong with it, let me show you around it a bit. Now underneath here is a 4 litre twin turbocharged V8 with 500 and I think 3 bhp. Look at those two turbos sitting nicely on top of the engine. Someone like me should definitely not own a car like this. It's got 19 inch super lightweight alloys, 6 pot brake calipers, it's British made. The doors open upwards. Two keys, which is rare on a crash damaged car. The battery is completely flat, but it's got 14,000 miles on the clock. The rear end is kind of undamaged and it looks so sick with this kind of ducktail spoiler. For a two seater coupe, it has really good boot space. And there's even room at the back here to put even more bags. The luxury of luggage storage. All the leather on the car feels amazing and really good quality. We've got carbon here and sort of like race style grab handles on the door cards. It's rear wheel drive. It does 0 to 60 in 3.6 seconds, a top speed of 195 miles an hour, and I still can't believe I bought one. There's one problem. Well, well, there's more than one problem, but it doesn't start. Now, I really cannot thank all you guys enough for giving me so much support throughout all these videos and this whole journey, and this wouldn't have even been possible without all of you watching. And after finishing off the 140i build, I wanted to push the content and myself to the next level, as I always try to. But believe me, parting with this much money with a crash damaged car that I don't even know starts wasn't an easy decision. But the decision was made a little bit easier by using Car Vertical, who has sponsored today's video. Now, Car Vertical is an amazing service which can check a car in over 20 different countries to make sure the car is as advertised. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Matt, why would you check this car out on Car Vertical if you already know it's been crashed? Well, I actually bought this car from eBay, and the guy I bought it off bought it from an auction. And in previous experience, like the old C63, we've had people who buy cars from auction, dress them up to look like they're in worse accidents than they actually are, and then put them back up for sale on eBay in hope to make a profit. So all I needed to do was to go onto Car Vertical, pop the registration in or the VIN number of the car, and I've got my check straight away. I can see there's a green light on the top for no mileage for which is good. It's not been recorded as stolen. There is an amber light for an accident though because we obviously know it's been in an accident and there's no outstanding finance on there. When I scroll through the report, I can see how many owners it's had and also I can see that the damage was done in December 2021. Rear wheel drive in the winter, not a good combination. 
the last recorded mileage on this was 13 miles but I can see that all lines up but the bit I wanted to know about was the damage and I can see here the pictures where it was actually listed at the car crash auction website and it looks exactly the same as it does now so this chap isn't lying to me which is good news and just to show you what a good report looks like here's a report on my E46 M3 all green lights at the top of the report so no mileage fraud or not been recorded as stolen I can see that all the mileage all lines up and there's no dips in there and of course no report damage. So to check your car out or a car that you're potentially about to buy, click the link in the description box below. And with my link you're going to save yourself a nice bit of cash as well and potentially even more if the car you were buying was a bit of a lemon. Okay, now we have the story of the car and all the sort of boring stuff out the way. We can get cracking on with trying to get this thing started and find out what's actually damaged. It's another day to live another fairy tale. So let me start off by saying there is absolutely nothing online about this car which is going to help me in the slightest when repairing it. Now a lot of the time when I get stuck on something, a quick Google or quick YouTube on how to do it normally solves the case, but with this, it's just not going to happen. Now although there isn't much online about Aston Martins, there is a lot online about C63s. Now why would that help me you ask? Well, take a look at this. Although this car's had a final inspection by this chap here who works for Aston Martin, the engine and a lot of the stuff in this car was actually built by Mercedes. This is the same engine as the newer C63. So that means this car is absolutely flooded with, well, Mercedes part numbers and logos. And this is the Aston Martin key, but underneath the covering, it looks a little bit like this, which kind of looks a little bit like that. <laughs> Pretty similar. Now, like my C63 and a lot of other cars that I've had, it does have a pyrotechnics fuse, which is here. And when the airbag's deployed, just like in this car well that fuse tends to blow just for safety reasons and when the chap told me even with the jumper pack on it didn't start well that was my first thought and that fuse is actually isolating that black cable which tends to run directly to the starter motor and I can see that the fuse is damaged because you can see here it's broken in the middle so as I've previously done before I switched over the black cable over to the red cable which constantly gets power and then it should be able to start now jumping that connection is exactly what I did when we went to go and collect the car to get it on the trailer, but still no luck. We get the ignition lights, but the car won't even crank. And because the car doesn't start, that means we can't get it out of park. So you're probably thinking, well, how the hell did we get it on a trailer? So shout out to Mark who went with me to recover the car. I've put his link in the description box below. But we did, as a team, manage to get this car on the trailer and get it back to Leicester. And Hannah seems to have taken a liking to it already. Now as we couldn't get it out of park so the rear wheels were locked up, these trays from Starbucks became super handy. We actually wedged them underneath the back wheels and then used the winch to drag it up onto the trailer. But getting it onto the pickup wasn't too hard. Getting it off, a different story. The only way we was going to get this car off is if we could get it into neutral. So I called Aston Martin, who are really helpful. Take that out of there and put it in there. It should put it in neutral. Don't know how that works. So the guy that I spoke to at Aston Martin Nottingham actually went to the workshop to show me photos of what screw I should undo and then where to put it afterwards. So I went underneath the Aston, located the gearbox and then removed this Allen head screw and popped it into a different hole. It showed on the dashboard a parking lock fault, which sure enough meant that the car was stuck in neutral. So then we could roll it off the trailer. Now, as you can see, there's some pretty bad suspension damage to the front driver's side. So Mark was having to kick the wheel to keep it straight as I had no control over that side of the car. But sure enough, we did it and it was off and onto the ground. So still to the day, the car has sat here and not moved because we can't get it started and it's just became a very expensive ornament. So since getting it on the ground, I did pop that Allen key screw back into the correct position to put the car back into park because I thought that it wouldn't start if the car was in neutral. Then I went ahead and started checking all the fuses on the car to make sure nothing had blown. From the positive wire on the battery here, I can see all of these cables have got power to them and they just power all the electrics of the car. It's that black cable that's sending power to the starter motor. 
Now I found this in the middle, which is like a Vodafone tracker, which again, they I don't know whether they could actually immobilize the car. They, I mean, they possibly could. It's probably worth giving these a phone call. Or well, the only other option I can think of is that it's got one of those ghost immobilizers on, which requires you to put like a, a special code in to start the car just because it prevents it being stolen. And there's no real way of me being able to find out whether it's got one of them on unless I got in contact with the previous owner. So if you're watching and you know the previous owner, let me know in the comment section or please just drop me an email. So when you actually try and start the car, this is what happens. The car does have keyless start, but just to eliminate any problems with the keyless start, I'm popping the key into the ignition, which is actually in the center console. My foot is firmly on the brake, but when I turn the key, the ignition lights come on the dash, but nothing happens at all. Not even one crank of the starter. So I resorted to the auto diagnostic tool. When the car was on the trailer and when I went to look at the car, I did plug in my diagnostic tool, but I was just getting communication faults between the OBD and the ECU. So maybe my my diagnostic tool isn't compatible with the Aston Martin, but I was hoping that the Autel would be. So this is like the third time I've tried now and it just won't read any codes from the ECU. There's no communication from the OBD port to the ECU. All of this just got me worrying. Did the guy sell it to me after buying it from auction and then found out that the engine is gone or there's a problem with the ECU? So I just wanted to check the connections to the ECU first. Now the loom which goes to the ECU runs all the way down here and then the ECU is literally just on the side of the engine there. But I can't see any brakes or anything obvious on why there's no communication between the battery and the OBD port to the ECU. The only thing that I can think of is maybe the diagnostic tool is probably too old or it's not had an update or you need a special tool to use on Aston Martins. So right now, all this damage is kind of the least of my worries. If I can't get this thing started or the ECU is frazzled, then the, there would literally be no point in repairing it. So I resorted back to the only option and calling back up Aston Martin Nottingham. Yeah, so I'm wondering if you can help. I've got a registration here and I need to get a quote for um, a lot of the parts that I need as well and the availability on them. Now, although Aston have been super helpful so far, I found out some interesting things, but they wanted me to bring the car in to check it over, but I didn't tell them it was crash damaged. Now, I've checked the oil in this car and it has oil and underneath it doesn't seem to have any leaks, although there is no coolant in it, but that shouldn't stop it from starting. Now, so far, Aston Martin have been really helpful, especially the chap telling me how to get the car out of park and into neutral the mechanical way. But there is some stuff that they are pretty strict about. They don't want any Tom, Dick or Harry repairing one of their cars back on the road, especially with it having structural damage. So things like this chassis leg here, which is aluminium, it's actually called a crash can, and that's actually split just down the back there, which is okay, because I think further back it is all right, but they're not allowed to actually sell me that because that is part of the safety structure of the car. They are allowed to sell me this, the radiators, bumpers, and that sort of stuff, but anything to do with like the structure or the airbags, they're not allowed to sell me. The only places they are allowed to sell it to are registered Aston Martin repair centers, which quite obviously I'm not. But not to worry, I did suspect that this was going to be an issue before I bought it and I did check with Aston Martin before I pulled the trigger but I have a little plan around that. The problem I don't have a plan around with is that it won't start. So this was it. I was left worried and just unsure on what to do. There's probably a good reason that the chap bought it from auction and then resold it back to me on eBay. But then I got thinking back to how similar this Aston was to the Mercedes which sprung an idea. Now, previously on the diagnostic tool, I've been selecting Aston Martin, which any normal person would. But this time I'm gonna select Mercedes and choose the new C63S. So the diagnostic tool thinks it's scanning the new C63S, which is basically what engine is in the Aston. And so far it does seem to be reading. So I've got my fingers crossed for this. Yes, so I think I've hacked the system here. Now I can read all the faults from the car. It, literally, this car must have the same ECU as long as the engine as well in the, as a C63S because I can literally read everything and this is what I couldn't do before. And the main thing that I think is the issue right here is the ECM. So if I go onto this fault here and after selecting that, I came up with a screen which sprung a little bit of hope. 
Uh-huh. This fault here said the engine start was blocked because of a crash event, so the starter does not run. And it says here that I should be able to reset this. I'm just hoping that this will work because the auto thinks it's communicating with the C63. Come on. Not an Aston Martin. I literally have no idea what I'm doing at this point, and I've never done any of this before, and I've never seen this screen before on auto. So I was just winging it as I go along with it, as I'm sure I'm going to have to do for a lot of this build. What do I press? F1? Started. Turn the ignition off. Okay. Ah! And then back on. And then repeat the process. If this works, come on. Nothing. Hmm. I've got nothing again now. Okay, let's try and let's try and reset that crash sensor thing again if we can. But after going on to auto and then resetting it again, I think we had a breakthrough. We're moving in the right direction. Now we can put the foot on the brake, we get the red light, and then listen. We get one kind of half crank and then nothing happens. Now I can only think that this is because the battery voltage is too low, but looking at here, it is about 11.9 volts, which isn't, well, 12 volts really, but maybe you need 13 volts to start it, I'm not quite sure. We've got a new battery with jumper cables onto the old battery, but perhaps I'm thinking I might need to put the new battery on or use the uh, jumper pack. I'm yet to find out. Okay, so we've gone from new battery to the jumper pack. We've started this all up. We've got Chris for moral support now. I'm here for good luck. And I'm gonna close your doors, otherwise it's bad luck. Well, oh, uh, uh, that's not gonna happen on okay, this side, I'm afraid. Right. Okay, so everything is reset. And let's see if we can do this. Okay, start engine, please, please. I am so sorry, I know that was cruel, but if you want to stay up to date with the Aston, click that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up button, I'm so sorry. See you in the next video, peace out. Oh wait, one second, yeah, you guys wanted to know how much I paid for this thing. Well, I paid 54 thousand pounds which is so much money for a crash damaged car but did i pay too much or is this a bargain of the century let me know in the comment section below see you in the next video